Hello everyone, my name is the Fox. This is Switch Emulation running on the GP2 Win Max 2. This is the 6800U version. Right now, this is running at 18.25 watt. So you can actually see it. If I get up close right up here, you can see it's running at 18.25 watt. And we're generally at 60 FPS here. Now, not every Switch game is going to run at that TDP. Uh, some other games like Super Mario Odyssey require more power. So I'll go ahead and show you that right now. Okay, so this is 6800U running Super Mario Odyssey. Now this is only 18.25 watts, so really you shouldn't expect much here. I'm going to go ahead and boost power to its max, and I'm also going to show you how much power we're taking. So if I undo the power cord right now, so if we take a look at total system power, which should show up in a moment because I was running plugged in. So at 18.25 watt, you can see that we're going to take roughly around 31 watts on total system power. This would equate to around... So a little bit over two hours of battery life. This is like two hours and 10 minutes, 130 minutes worth of battery life right here. So now again, if we take a look at our frame rate, it's just not good enough here. Let me go ahead and boost this up. All right, so you can see this is Cypher is bad. I'm gonna go ahead and enable 28 watt with option M. You can see 28 watt right there. Let's jump back into Yuzu. 28 watt, and you can see that we're still not getting enough power. We need to push it a little bit further because we're still kind of fluctuating. Far more playable here, but we're not solid 60 here. But you can see that we're using around 45 watts to emulate this right now. All right, that is basically 90 minutes of battery life right there. So even at 28 watt, if you were to run 28 watt and needing to use that, you'd only have 90 minutes of battery life with a gigantic 67 watt hour battery that's on the GP2 Max 2. But let's go ahead and we have to push this even further. Alrighty, so now we're at basically 32 watt. Even though I specified 45 watt, we're only needing 32 watt, so it's kind of self-capping off here. And what is our total system power? Our total system power is around like 50 watt right now. Uh, so we're looking around like 80 minutes of battery life. 60 FPS, but it dials down to about 50 every now and again, but far more playable than it was at 18 watt. So again, even you can see I'm using around 50 watts of power from the battery, which is tremendous. So tremendous in a bad way. Like we would not, we get around 80 minutes of battery life here at best. So I would really recommend playing plugged in. And that's just a suggestion. Okay, so that's the only thing I wanted to show you guys that you're gonna need to be pushing wattage if you wanted to do some high-end emulation here. It will take a lot of power to run here, but it can run and it's actually, you know, super smooth to play. It's actually nice to play here. It's not super locked 60, but we're close enough and it's actually quite nice. Bottom line is that you're going to have to tweak it yourself, knowing that you can use less power on some games. So there are a few things to note when using Ryujinx as the emulator for Switch emulation. Uh, for Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, everything is rendering correctly, so the tilt-shift camera is all correct. However, because we're pretty much limited to the OpenGL back, uh, backend, now there is a version of Ryujinx that has Vulkan, but it's pretty old. So hopefully they either get that fixed, or in a few months AMD has already 
said that they've um, they have a driver coming out that will improve open jail performance so we'll see where that nets us out in the future but right now Ryujinx is the only emulator that will render Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening correctly you can do it on Yuzu but you do need to disable the tilt shift effect completely and there's also additional things that are broken like the uh, chomp chomp is completely not rendering at all so it's kind of a thing that you're going to have to make a decision on you can either get sub-optimal frame rate and have full compatibility like everything's actually rendering correctly or you can be missing a lot of features and have 60 fps so that's kind of where legend of zelda link's awakening is right now now this is actually a huge change paper mario is running at full speed compared to intel which was basically half speed uh, once again i do recommend if you're going to play paper mario origami that you disable the motion controls because you won't be able to make some movements and instead be able to use the analog sticks to make movements. All right, so this is where I'm going to leave off the last look for the 6800U version of the GP Twin Max 2 on Switch emulation. I wanted to include Ryujinx in here just to show that we can get Luigi's Mansion 3 running. We also can get better results with Link's Awakening uh, insofar as better tilt shift support, things rendering correctly. However, we aren't experiencing the best performance, uh, mostly because we're just using that OpenGL backend that is what Ryujinx mainlines on. If we ever get Ryujinx with a uh, proper Vulcan backend on the updated builds, that would be ideal. However, AMD's newest Radeon drivers in a few months will support optimized OpenGL, so it'll be kind of interesting to take a look back there as well. But that's with what we're taking a look at, so we took a look at a few things with Yuzu. You can also do mods with Yuzu to kind of increase performance or make things less demanding. And then also on Ryujinx, we can get better compatibility. So it'll be up to you on what you want to decide to run. But this is one avenue where I would really recommend running while plugged in because we do use a sensational amount of power. It really, it's the same difference between the Intel version or the AMD 6800U version. Uh, a few games do run at 18 watt. However, a lot of them are going to want at least 28 watt to 32 watts. That's it, guys. As always, thank you for your time and thanks for watching.